Looking to start investing in a dividend ETF but just don't know which one to choose? Today I'll be comparing four different ETFs that'll be a great start for your portfolio or addition to your current portfolio. And if you're here and if you're new to my channel, I discuss investing in stocks and ETFs, all with the goal of inspiring you to start growing your wealth. So as I mentioned, I'll be comparing four different ETFs and they are VIG, VYM, SCHD, and DGRO. So first I'll look at each one individually and then I have a spreadsheet that I'll compare all four of the same data next to each other so we'll have it in one place. And also if you see my other videos, you know that three of these are in my Roth IRA portfolio so I'll give a quick update for the month of February of my Roth IRA portfolio and show uh, how these three are doing uh, within this last month. So let's jump in. Over in Seeking Alpha, we have VIG, and this is the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF. This ETF tracks the S&P 500 Dividend Growers Index, and the stocks that are within this ETF, they have to have grown their dividend within the last 10 years. So looking right here, the current share price of VIG is $155.68. Down here at the chart, we can see that the last year it has grown 7.88% and from the start of the year it has fallen 11.16% and just within this last month it has fallen 6.44%. I'm going to move over here to the 52 week range and the lowest it's been is $142 and the highest has been $172 so it's a little below its mid, mid average. Uh, this ETF has an expense ratio of 0.06 and if you don't know what expense ratio is, it's basically the price to invest in the ETF for like management. So if you have invested $10,000 into this ETF, annually you'll pay $6. So very, very affordable. And the dividend, uh, this ETF pays quarterly dividends. So we'll look over at the dividend tab. So over here, uh, for the dividend yield, Seeking Alpha gives it a value of B+. Plus and for the growth, it gives it a value B. Down here, we'll see a summary. We have the yield is 2.03%. Annually, it'll pay around $3. The last five years, it has grown at a rate of 7.82% and has grown that dividend for the last eight years. Moving on to holdings, I'm gonna, for each of these, I'll look at the top three sectors and then also the top five holdings just to have a comparison between them all. So right here in VIG, we have financials at 17.58%. Industrial is 16.14%. Technology is 15.70%. So these three make up about 50% looking at this graph over here. Scrolling down for top holdings, the first one up is Microsoft at 4.72%. Johnson & Johnson at 3.81%. United Healthcare at 3.75%, JP Morgan at 3.29%, and Procter & Gale at 3.28%. And the top 10 right here that we're looking at makes up a total of 31.15% of the entire ETF. And this ETF has 270 holdings. Next up is VYM, and this is the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF. The CTF tracks the FTSE High Dividend Yield Index. The current share price is $109.16. Looking down here at the graph, we can see the last year it has grown 8.95%. And from the start of the year, it has fallen 3.83%. And just within this last month, it has fallen 4.59%. As 52 week range, the lowest has been at $98 and the highest has been 115 so it's around it's a little higher than this mid-range the expense ratio is also 0 0.06 and it pays dividends quarterly so let's go to the dividend tab so seeking alpha gives this dividend yield a a and its growth a b minus in the dividend summary we have the dividend yield is 3.48 percent its annual payout is going to be around three dollars and 75 cent the it has grown at a rate of 7% and has grown that uh, dividend for the past 11 years. For VVM, the top three sectors are financials at 21.9%, 
Consumer Defensive at 14.39%, Healthcare at 14.06%. And this also makes about 50% of its, of its entire ETF. Scroll down here for the top 10 sectors. We have Johnson & Johnson at 3.24%, JP Morgan at 3.11%, Home Depot at 2.78%, Procter & Gale at 2.75% and Bank of America at 2.37%. And these 10 right here make up approximately 23.9% of the entire ETF. And there are 413 holdings within VOIM. Looking at SAHD, this is the Swab Dividend Equality ETF. And this ETF tracks the Dow Jones Dividend 100 Index. Current share price is $76.64. Looking at a graph here, we have for the last year, it's grown, has grown 6.16%. From the start of the year, it has fallen 6.62%. And for the last month, it has fallen 4.91%. Over here in the 52 week range, its lowest is $70 and its highest is around $82. So it's a little higher than its mid range. Expense ratio is also 0.06 and pays its dividends quarterly. Over in the dividend tab, Signoff gives the dividend yield a grade of A and the growth rate of B minus. Down here in the summary, we have the dividend yield is 3.28. The annual payout will be around $2.48. Has grown its dividend for the last five years at a rate of 12.32% and has grown that dividend for the last nine years. Top sectors in SCHD are financials, once again, 22.13%, industrial at 17.84%, technology at 15.31%. Scroll down here, top 10 sectors. We have Coca-Cola at 4.57%, Verizon at 4.29%, Amgen Inc. at 4.26%, Merkin Company at 4.22% and Broadcom at 4.03%. And these top 10 make up just about 40% of the entire ETF. And there are 105 holdings within SCHD. Last ETF we'll be looking at is Degro. And this is the iShare Core Dividend Growth ETF. And this ETF tracks the Morningstar Dividend Growth Index. And one other thing is compared to VIG, the stocks in there need to have grown its dividend for the last 10 years. With Degrow, they have to have grown it for the last five years. So a little different there as far as what gross stocks are within it. The current share price is $51.63. Coming down here, the last year it has grown 9.18%. Since the beginning of the year, it has fallen 8.85%. And within the last month, it has fallen 6.48%. Going over here to the 52 week range, the lowest is $46 and the highest is 56. So it's about in the middle right now. The expense ratio is a little bit higher, so at 0.08, which is still good because if you have $10,000, it only costs you $8 annually. This ETF also plays quarterly. And Seeking Alpha gives the dividend yield a grade of A minus and a, a growth rate of C plus. So this has been the lowest one out of all four so far. Going on here to summary, we have the dividend yield is 2.36%. The annual payout will be a little over $1. As grown, it's dividend at, at a rate of 10.30%. And it has grown that dividend for the last seven years. Over in its holdings, we have the financials at a 21.92%. Technology is 17.4%. 41% and healthcare at 17.31%. So those are those top three. Looking at his top holdings, we have Johnson Johnson at 2.85%, Apple at 2.77%, Microsoft at 2.76%, Procter & Gamble at 2.74%, and JP Morgan at 2.54%. So these top 10 make up about 24% of the entire ETF, and this ETF has 422 holdings. What I'm showing you right now in Yahoo Finance, right here is a graph just within the last year is the time frame, And I have, as you can see here, each of the four 
ETFs that we talked over. In dark blue, we have VIG. Light blue is VOIM. The purple is SCHD. And the pink is DGRO. And so within the last year, just looking here, one I wanted to point out is, slightly mention it, v VIG and DGRO are both geared to growth stocks. And then VYM and SCHD are geared to high dividend yield stocks. So you can see here, just looking at dark blue and the pink, VIG and DGRO are very close in line. And then the light blue, VY, VYM and SCHD being the purple, they're very close. And you see they're pretty much uh, kind of competing against each other. So looking at that trend, and if we just go back then the beginning of the year, you can kind of see now we have VYM is outperforming DGRO and VIG which kind of makes sense with all the volatility, the growth stocks are kind of being affected a bit more. So I wanted to point that out just to have all four on the same graph and just to kind of see the relationship between them. So they're very similar in a way, more so the two growth ones and two high yield ones. So I just wanted to give you that picture. Right here, I did put a graph together just to have all four side by side. Up here, I have each one listed. So I have VIG, VYM, SCHD and DGRO. Feel free to pause and take a, a screenshot of all this. Here at the top, I have the expense ratio and all the dividend information, how the top sectors we went over, the number of holdings, and scroll down here. I have the top 10 holdings. And one thing that I added that didn't go over, which is new, down here I have percent overlap. So basically, look at this overlap as one ETF having similar stocks within it as in the second ETF. So just to quickly go over it, on the first column we have VIG. So VIG has 46% of its stocks are within BYM. 13% of its holdings are within SCHD and 84% of its holdings are in DGRO. Over for VYM, we have 30% of its holdings in VIG, 21.8% of its holdings is in SCHD, and 48% of its holdings is in DGRO. SCHD, we have 36% of its holdings is in VIG, 89% of its holdings is in VYM, and 55% of its holdings are within DGRO. And lastly, we have DGRO, 54% of it is in VIG, 47% of its holdings is in VYM, and 13% of its holdings is in SCHD. So when looking at this information, one thing you can use as if you're gonna have two or more of these ETFs within your portfolio, you can kind of see what the overlap is gonna be. Just for example, say I want to have a growth, a more geared to a growth ETF. So I'm gonna choose just for example, VIG, and that is in my Roth RA portfolio. So with that, if I'm gonna have a second ETF, just so I don't have double dipping into similar stocks, I would most likely choose SCHD because those two VIG only shares 13% uh, of its holdings within SCHD. So that's how I would use that information, just uh, if you're gonna go more than one, one of these stocks. So feel free to take uh, screenshots, as I mentioned, of this, the spreadsheet here. And the last thing, quickly go over my Roth IRA portfolio. So my Roth IRA, currently all, overall I have $6,452.38, have a negative gain of $545 and a negative return of 12.71%. So just looking down at this past month for February, have a negative gain of $383 and a negative return of 5.76%. So within this last month, in February, three of the weeks, I contributed $125. And then last week, this is the second week of March. Last week, I, I contributed another $125. So about $500 within the last five weeks. Scroll on here, we can see these are all the holdings. And as you see, everything's in the red, just like the whole market. Since uh, I've been going over the dividend ETFs, I'm gonna go over here in the high dividend my high dividend pie. And you can see here I have within this last month only a negative gain of $30 and a negative return of 4.5%. And right here you can see, just looking at, we have 
SHD, so I'm at a negative return of 3.82%, VIG is a negative 5.59%, and VYM is a negative 3.83%. So you can see that SHD and VYM are very close together, and they're both, as I mentioned, of the high dividend yield, and then VIG, the growth one, is doing performing more importantly, <laughs> being more geared to growth stocks. That pretty much wraps up all four comparisons. Just to go over, we had VIG, VYM, SCHD, and Decro. Let me know down in the comments if you are investing in any of these ETFs or do you have other favorite dividend ETFs that you like to invest in. And one other thing also, uh, as you see, my Roth IRA is in the M1 Finance and right now M1 Finance is doing a promo that if you open an account, they'll give you, gift you $50 and they'll gift me $50 in turn. So down in the description, I do have a referral link for that if you are interested in opening an account with them. If you value this content, do me a favor and smash the like button. Also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. On the end card, I'll have another video of analysis I've done and also my most recent upload. So with that, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.